Hello everyone, welcome to CBN News' virtual Holy Land tour, where you get to see the Bible come alive from the comfort of your own home. Well, the Dead Sea is a natural wonder, a biblical landmark, and a mineral treasure. But this unique body of water is getting smaller, and as Chris Mitchell reports, some experts fear the Dead Sea could be drying up. Take a look. The Dead Sea sits on the Great Rift Valley between Israel and Jordan. It's fed by fresh water from the Jordan River and Mineral Springs, yet the Dead Sea is the world's saltiest lake. So salty, no fish can survive in it. It's also the lowest place on Earth, but experts warn it's getting even lower. Each year, the level of the Dead Sea drops by more than four feet. In the last 25 years, in some places, the shoreline has retreated nearly a mile, and experts say the sea is evaporating now faster than ever. Geologist Eli Raz blames man, not nature. The drop in the level of the Dead Sea is due to the human interference in the water balance of the Dead Sea. Raz says for decades, both Israel and Jordan have diverted the waters of the Jordan River, allowing only a trickle into the sea. He also blames industries that harvest the rich minerals. But Noam Goldstein says companies like the Dead Sea Works actually help the area. We are taking water from the northern part to the southern part. The southern part, our evaporation ponds, without it, it was dry. It's been years since the Dead Sea flowed naturally this far south. Now a canal routes water from the natural upper sea to evaporation ponds, where sun and hot dry weather produce the raw materials that turn into money. Today, Israel's Dead Sea Works and its Jordanian counterpart mine minerals like potash, magnesium, and bromine. In fact, they produce 10% of the world's potash. Potash is the main product in fertilizer, which is needed for agriculture around the world. Tourism also thrives on the waters here, which are 10 times saltier than ocean water. Here at the En Gedi Spa, some 250,000 tourists visit each year, more than half from abroad. The unique thing about the Dead Sea is that you can't sink. In fact, it feels like you're bobbing like a cork. You could do this for hours. The water and atmosphere also have medicinal properties, and doctors even prescribe a visit to the Dead Sea as a treatment for skin and breathing ailments. Drugs couldn't help Melody Degan's psoriasis, but a visit for treatment at the Dead Sea was so successful, she decided to stay. It's one year I'm here. I can feel the difference. Even though when I'm in the sun, I feel it more, but even just working here with the special air, it's helping a lot. With so many unique benefits, it's easy to understand the alarm over the drop in the level of the Dead Sea. Two major projects are being considered to save it. One option, the Med Dead Canal, would pump water 45 miles from the Mediterranean Sea to the Dead Sea creating electricity for Israel. Another project called the Red Dead Canal would actually send water uphill some 140 miles from the Red Sea's Gulf of Aqaba in Jordan before it runs down to the Dead Sea. The World Bank is spending one and a quarter billion dollars to study the feasibility, but some say political motives are involved. The Red Dead Canal is supposed to be a joint Israeli-Jordanian-Palestinian project. To market the project, they cover it with a lot of phrases, but actually there is nothing except of producing water for Jordan, which is very important. But to my opinion, we can produce water from jo for Jordan in other way, much cheaper economically and environmentally. Experts warn quick fixes would be costly and could cause irreparable damage to the Dead Sea and surrounding area. They say introducing seawater here could cause gypsum crystals to form and bacteria to grow. Instead, some experts say a more natural option is available, even though it would require importing and desalinating water. Let the Jordan flow down to the Dead Sea as it used to be before the settlements and the agricultural areas uh, took the water. Professor Adin says interdependence between countries when it comes to water should be a last resort. Water is, is, is life and we should be independent. In but while modern man seeks to save the Dead Sea, 
The Bible has a lot to say about both its past and its future. This is an area rich in biblical history. Here in En Gedi, David and his men hid from an angry King Saul. Named for the ibex, or wild mountain goat still climbing its cliffs, the En Gedi Springs would have provided valuable water for agriculture and living in this desert area. Further south, the barren heights of Sodom loom where the Bible says Lot and his family fled a hail of brimstone. Across the sea are the mountains of Moab and Edom in present-day Jordan. Ezekiel also prophesied that one day the waters of the Great Salt Sea would be healed and teeming with fish. The prophet Zechariah said that day would come when Israel's Messiah returns to the Mount of Olives. It's a day Christians worldwide anticipate. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, The Dead Sea. Thank you so much for coming along with us today. Be sure to tune in tomorrow where you'll see the innovative plan to save the Dead Sea.